about how to take maximum benefit from the month of Ramadan. We talked a little bit about the night of power yesterday, the Laylatul Qadr. Today, um, in continuation with the same thing, two things we would like to, I would like to uh, mention here. Number one is Aisha radiallahu anha once asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet of Allah, if I was to find Laylatul Qadr, and of course, Laylatul Qadr is the night where you have dua to be accepted, for sure, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So which dua should I ask from Allah azza wa jal? Now over here, just a little bit uh, in depth going into the question itself. Because one of the things we need to understand, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never recommended anyone to do a lot of actions. So a person came, he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I want to go into Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Qul amantu billahi mustaqim. Say, I believe in Allah and then be steadfast on it. Another person said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, Uridu an akuna a'lam an nas. I want to be the most knowledgeable person on earth. What did the Prophet Sallallahu said? Oh, now you go to this university, after that you enroll into this university and make sure you get your credits transferred from this one to that one and then after that you go. No. Simple answer. Ittaqillah takun a'lam nas Fear Allah and you will become the most knowledgeable person. So one of the key point is that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always gave answer which was immediately doable and which can be done by any individual. It's not just confined to a certain category of person or certain caliber of individual, no. It is for everyone because he's rahmatul lil alameen, mercy for the whole humanity. So whenever any companion of the Prophet ﷺ came and he asked him a question about something, Immediately the Prophet gave him an answer, it was short, it was meaningful, and it was doable immediately. It didn't require a time, it didn't require to be at a certain place, it didn't require to be in a certain designated area, or in designated position. It can be done anywhere, it can be done by anyone, it can be done at all times. So Aisha radiallahu anha came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, O Prophet of Allah, if I was to find Laylat al-Qadr, what dua should I make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Aisha, quuli, Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afa anni. That, O oh Aisha, when you find Laylat al-Qadr, make this dua. That, O oh Allah, you love to pardon, pardon me. You are the one who pardons, and you are the one who is showering his mercy, I, you know, and you love to pardon, so pardon me. To forgive my sins. Now, out of all the things, you know, maybe a lot of things are there for a person to ask. Why did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically mention this, asking forgiveness of your sins from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because the ultimate success lies in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoning the sins of individuals, forgiving him. And that's, that shows the mercy of Allah azza wa jalla. Look at the hadith which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ فَذْنَبُوا That if you were not to sin and not to disobey, Allah will take you away and He will bring another nation who would sin and then after that they will ask Allah for forgiveness and then Allah will forgive him. So forgiveness is the, is the something which is exclusive to Allah and Allah loves to do that. And that is the most beloved thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, if a person receives that forgiveness in the night of power, what else he needs? And he, there is nothing more that he would need in his life or she would need in her life. Why? Because Allah loves him now and Allah loves her and Allah Azza wa Jalla has forgiven. The second portion is, is the atikaf spending the night and especially the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, it was the habitual practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he did. In fact, Ibn Mas'ud said that when after the Ramadan became, after Ramadan, the fasting of the month of Ramadan became obligatory, 
I did not see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leave atikaf in any of the month of Ramadan throughout until he left from this world. So from the second year of Hijrah all the way to the 10th year of Hijrah, he did atikaf every night, every, every year in the month of Ramadan. And in fact, in some of the Ramadan, he did atikaf for the whole month. And in some of the Ramadan, he did atikaf only for the last 10 days. And the purpose of atikaf is to connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the person who does atikaf for one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him away three trenches from the fire of hell. And each trench, the distance between the other is almost equivalent to the heavens and earth. And that's how much Allah takes an individual away from the fire of hell. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the ability to bring these qualities into our life, make us, give us the opportunity to maximize our Ramadan by doing this great ibadat and worship. Yadakumullah khair, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakumullah, bihamdik, wa ashadu wa la ilaha 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 ila